Shruti Bani. Today we are discussing class 6 general science subject. So in the previous class we have discussed chapter 1 that is food where does it come from. Today we will be discussing chapter 2. I have divided this chapter 2 into a two session children that is components of food. So the chapter name is the components of food. This is a chapter 2 in your class 6 general science. Before starting to a class, let us have a puzzle game about the previous class. Whatever you have learned, I have given some work also to do it. So down, materials used to make a dish, animals that heat flesh of dead animals, an example of dairy products across germinating seeds, an example of poultry products, an example of omnivore, beans that this from flour to make onion. So this are the clues which I am giving. Solve this puzzle children by using your knowledge of chapter first. Yes, let us see the answers. That is the first one ingredients. The second one for us, the answer is scavengers. Third one butter and the fourth one sprouts. The fifth one egg. Sixth beer and seventh is nectar. I hope children you have enjoyed to solve this puzzle. What are the learning points you will be learning in this chapter? That is components of food. So you will be learning about the meaning of nutrients, significance of nutrients, different food in different states, constants of food, the nutrients present in different foods, testing of nutrients, importance of nutrients to our body, balanced diet and also the last you will be learning about deficiency diseases. So overall learning points of this chapter. As I told, I have divided this chapter into two sessions. For this session, we will be discussing about the meaning of nutrients, significance of nutrients, different food in different states, major nutrients of food, nutrients, their meaning, sources and function and testing of nutrients. These are the key terms we will be discussing in this session children. First, as already in the previous class I have told you to collect the information about different food items in a different states of India. As you know, our meals usually at least one item made up of some kind of grains or dal or dish with a meat and vegetables. Have you ever thought why our meals consist of so many varieties? Is it required to our body children? Yes, your guess is correct. We have to think why we need, why we have to have different varieties of food in our meals, in our breakfast, in our dinner. Let us look at the different food items in the different states of India. What you are seeing children? Yes, this is the outline of India with the states. So, I am just highlighting some of the states you have to tell or you have to think what are the food items which are very famous in that particular state. So, Karnataka, Gujarat, Rajasthan, Sikkim, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Children, you can take a book and you can write the food items which are popular in this particular state. Good, children, your guess is correct. In Karnataka, so basically bar or South Indian meals, everybody have this. In Gujarat, they prefer Dokla. In Rajasthan, Dal, Bati, Kurma. In Sikkim, Momos. In Andhra Pradesh, Biryani. In Tamil Nadu, Pongal. So, these are the different uh, popular food items which are being prepared in the particular state. Let us have a look what do different food items contain in the some regions. Like if I take Punjab, Makhi roti which has been prepared by corn and the dal usually they use is a rajma, a kidney shape, a beans in Punjab and the vegetables are used in Punjab is sarsal, sarg, 
mustard need curry with the with this they use curd ghee and in andhra pradesh the item of grain they use rice the item of dal or meat they use chur dal and rasam and also the vegetables a kunduru that is tondekai buttermilk ghee pickle in karnataka we use ragi balls chur dal sambar vegetables like tomato carrot beans lady's finger brinjal all these are vegetables which are being used in our karnataka with this we use papad buttermilk pickle as well as curd in our meat in bihar so they prepare a lengthy roti and they use a dal brinjal green vegetables all these are being used in bihar with this they may add a ghee also in their meals so you have understood children different food items are being used in a different states and different region and it also varies from region to region now you have understood we have a varieties of food right are this required to have a varieties of food or different types of food in our meals if you are traveling we may keep whatever it is available on the way it may not possible for some to us to eat such varieties of item most of the time correct so there must be some reason why meals usually consist of such distribution do you think our body needs a different kinds of food for some special purpose yes children you have to think because whatever we eat we should know what we are eating what are the things we are it is going to our body what we need to our body so what is the thing which is required to our body and what is there in that food so we will learn it so that is the meaning of nutrients as you know the food is essential for the body as it keeps us healthy helps in the growth of our body the food contains some useful substances that organisms need to be alive to live and grow this useful components are called as nutrients remember the useful components present in the food we call as nutrients i am repeating children this a uh, term which is used continuously you should remember the meaning of nutrients n u t r i e n t s what do you mean by nutrients it is nothing but the important components which is present in the food okay that we call as a nutrients this nutrients plays a vital role in our body children and food is obtained both from plants and animals and then cooked by adding some ingredients this concept we have already discussed we have a two source of food that is which we we get it from plants as well as animals and to prepare a delicious food we use a different ingredients or the materials or the raw materials which are being used to prepare a delicious food clear with the meaning of nutrients children yes now we will study the major nutrients of food or it is also called as constituents of food so we have major nutrients carbohydrates proteins fats vitamins and minerals these are the major nutrients present in the food items which are those carbohydrates proteins fats vitamins and minerals addition to this we should also have a dietary fibers it is also called roughages and water major nutrients very very important children you should know the term carbohydrates proteins vitamins and minerals fats dietary fibers and water now we'll discuss each and every constituent of food first we'll discuss the carbohydrates all of our activities require energy our energy supplies come from the two major sources which are those children yes the major source of energy is our cells sugar jaggery some kinds of fruits and potatoes and this food items contains a large quantities of chemicals which we call as carbohydrates all the food items which treat to taste contain the carbohydrates this food contains a large quantity of chemicals called as carbohydrates what carbohydrates consist of it is composed of three elements children carbon hydrogen and oxygen they are the source of energy 
sources of carbohydrates so by seeing this picture you can come to know what are the food items which contains a carbohydrates rice jaggery sabudan sugar bread honey fruits potato vegetables these are the food items which consist of carbohydrates now we will study about the proteins the proteins are composed of carbon oxygen nitrogen hydrogen and sulfur in different amounts nitrogen is the most essential element in protein children proteins are made up of a simple substances called amino acids and they help in the building of new cells and repairing the worn out tissues thus the food items containing the proteins are called as body building food if the food item which contains the proteins they are also called as body building foods what are the sources of proteins by seeing the picture you can see it's all the pulses green gram dal moong dal ug dal os gram soya bean egg milk these are the sources of protein children based on the availability of uh, proteins we have a uh, types of proteins so on the basis of the availability of uh, proteins we have a uh, two types one is the plant proteins as well as animal proteins what are animal proteins the proteins which are from animal products are called as animal proteins example meat fish egg and milk are some sources of animal proteins the proteins which are obtained from plant products are called as plant protein example pulses soya beans grams cashew are some sources of plant proteins let us discuss about the fats fats provides us energy in fact they give us twice the energy that carbohydrates gives us children based on the sources of fats which are obtained to us it has been classified into animal fats as well as plant fats so animal fats milk and milk products are animal fats plant fats vegetable oils are the sources of plant fats children now it's a very very important how do you we know that what are the food contains what nutrients very very important children do all this food contains all this nutrients with the simple method of we can test whether cooked food or a raw ingredients contains one or more this nutrients the test of carbohydrates proteins and fats is easy when you compare with the other test for this you need some solution apparatus materials let us have a look what are the apparatus which is required to test the nutrient in a given sample to test the nutrients so we need some apparatus which are been there in the laboratory so this is called as test tube stands with the test tubes so i have taken a measuring cylinders beakers conical flask chemicals which is required to prepare the solution glass rod for stirring spatula test tube holder dropper a solution and watch glass so these are the apparatus which is required to test the nutrients yes children you had a look no yes now we we'll understand what are the solution which is required and what is the steps you have to follow to prepare the solution so first solution we have to prepare to test the carbohydrate that is the dilute iodine solution for this you need children pincher water beaker glass rod and dropper the procedure we you have to follow to prepare a dilute iodine solution is take a few drops of tincture add to 100 ml or 50 ml of water see the solution and keep aside for the test so remember children this dilute solution is required to test the presence of starch so let us have a look how to prepare the solution of iodine let us know how to prepare dilute iodine solution which is required for to test the carbohydrates present in the food items 
so for that we need a tincture 50 ml of water beaker as well as glass rod take 10 ml of iodine to a beaker add 50 ml of water to 10 ml of iodine stir it well so this is called dilute iodine solution which is used to test the presence of carbohydrates in the food items children will prepare a two solution which is required for testing of proteins for this you need two chemicals called sodium hydroxide flakes called as caustic soda copper sulfate CuSO4 beaker conical flask spatula and holder as well as a glass rod and water first we'll prepare solution of caustic soda 10 grams of caustic soda or sodium hydroxide flakes in a beaker approximately add 100 ml of water take a glass rod and stir it and leave for some times until it dissolves so this is a solution of caustic soda which is required for testing of proteins now we'll prepare a solution of copper sulfate so take 10 grams of copper sulfate in a conical flask add 100 ml of water and stir it children you can see the blue color which is a copper sulfate solution so first solution which we have prepared is a solution of caustic soda it is completely dissolved in the second solution that is a solution of copper sulfate these two are used to test the proteins yes children you have come to know how to prepare the solutions now we will test for the starch so the aim of this test is to test the presence of starch in a food sample whether it contains a starch or a protein or other fats so the material required it is food sample iodine solution which you have already prepared test tubes what is the procedure you have to follow? Take a food sample, raw or it may be a cooked food in a test tube, watch glass, take 2-3 to three drops of dilute solution on the food sample, observe the changes children. Key thing you have to observe, you can see a blue black color appear in the food items. By this we can inference that a blue black color indicates that food contains stuff. You can also repeat this test with other food items to find out which contains proteins. Children remember iodine solution is used to test the starch and also the blue black color will indicate the presence of starch. Let us have a look in the video. Now we will test for starch. 
it's a constituents of carbohydrates for this i have taken a food items which are rich in carbohydrates rice flour jowar flour rice tur dal milk jaggery egg white cooked rice a slice of bread and the solution that which we have prepared dilute iodine solution for this i have taken a rice flour mix with water shake it for this you have to add 2 to 3 drops of iodine solution children you can observe a blue black color which indicate the presence of starch keenly you have to observe next i have taken jowar flour and mix with water add dilute iodine solution now i have taken a soaked rice the water of soaked rice just adding a 2 to 3 drops of iodine solution so you can see the color changes to a blue black and this indicate the presence of starch now we can take a cooked rice don't waste the food for the testing purpose I have taken so add a 2 to 3 drops of iodine solution to a cooked food children you can observe the color blue black color which indicate the presence of starch now i take a slice of a bread for other items i have taken a dal soaked as well as cooked dal water and i am adding a iodine solution for it children can you see any changes there is no blue black color this indicate there is a no starch in it now i have taken a milk also have taken the egg white i am adding a 2 to 3 drops of iodine solution there is no change in the color so this indicates the absence of starch the blue black color indicates the presence of starch now we will test proteins for this i have taken all the pulses grind it to a fine powder milk and egg white and the solution caustic soda solution as well as copper sulfate solution in the first test tube i have taken all the pulses grind it and i put a water to it it is also you have to add a solution of caustic soda 2 to 3 drops then followed by copper sulfate solution you can see the color gets changing children to a violet this violet indicates the presence of proteins can you see now i have taken milk next i have taken a egg 
white you can see the violet color which indicates the presence of proteins now i have taken a cooked dal which indicates the presence of proteins yes children so violet color which appears in the dal as well as egg white and also milk next we will have a look how to test the fats now we will test the nutrient called fats for this i have taken mustard almond groundnut coconut cashew nut sesame and cooked vegetables the seeds on the white sheets and you can see the patches of oil mustard almond groundnut cashew the ghee the coconut sesame and the cooked wood so the water it leaves and all other uh, sources of fats which leaves the patches on the white sheet this patches which indicates the presence of fats so thank you children all this experiment supported by vidya mandir public school amrutali bangalore oily patches on the white sheet indicates the presence of fats complete look what are the nutrients whether that nutrients for which contains a proteins Answer. So you have to encircle 